Hello everyone and welcome to this another episode of 2D Fundamentals. My name is Kasanis. In the last episode, we took a look at the concept behind the ball bounce. Uh, and I'd like to take a look today at doing the ball bounce in spine. Alright guys, let's get started. Okay, guys, so here we are in the trial version of Spine once more. Uh, it is the trial version, uh, so I've got all access to everything as far as the functionality is concerned, except for saving. Uh, I will try and keep things limited to uh, non, like just the essential package of Spine, just in case anyone out there has purchased Spine and they're following along. The essential package of Spine, I think, was about 65 bucks, uh, so it's much more reasonable. But you don't get things like constraints or meshes, etc. So I'll try and keep my, my tutorials based on the, the uh, essential packages of Spine, and maybe we'll do a little bit of advanced stuff later on. But for now, guys, we are in the trial version. We got here, we're going to start a brand new animation, new animation, and we'll call this Ball Bounce Loop. All right, we're going to start ourselves a brand new Ball Bounce Loop here. And what I'm going to do, uh, I think we're going to start this off You know what? We'll put it right here. We'll put it right here. We're going to use this line here on the floor as... Yeah, we'll use this line here on the floor as as where our, our ball's hitting, just so we have a reference. You could probably put something in here to give yourself a better reference, but I'm not going to bother. I'll just use what's on the floor right there. And I think what I'm going to do... I'm going to key this. I think what I'm going to do... I think I'm going to start this off in this squash position as if it just hit the floor. Uh, I don't normally like to do that. I normally like to start my loop from the ball at its apex and falling down like I did in the last video. But I think this time I actually might start it like this. And like I said, I'm going to use the squash for my squash. And, uh, sorry, I'm going to use the scale for my squash and stretch. Uh, and I'm not going to use anything scientific here. I I've put point two on either side in an attempt to maintain volume. I'm not going to do anything fancier than that. Uh, and I'll just move this down and key it. So I think I'm going to start off with my my ball in this position here rather than at the apex, and we'll work upwards and then downwards again. So this is going to be a loop. I'm going to go across. I'm going to assume this is going to be a 24 frame loop. I think that's probably fine. It's not quite a second long. If you're doing it as a second, it's going to be 30. Uh, we can do it as a second, I guess. Let's make a one-second bounce. That's probably fine. And I'm just going to key this once again, key this and key this. Oh, no, I rotate. Oh, well, whatever, I did it. Uh, I'll key this and key this. I don't know how to turn my... I could probably just delete this. Can I just delete this now that I've got that in there? I do not like the way this works. It, it doesn't... It doesn't. It's not very user-friendly. Can I stretch this up? Yeah, there we go. All right, there we go. That's fine. Um, okay, so I've got myself translate and scale, and I, I've I've got no motion in there. Good. Um, we've got that at zero and at thirty. So let's assume that at fifteen we're gonna hit our apex. All right, I'm gonna put it at, at thirty and I'm uh, sorry, fifteen, and I'm just gonna drag this up. And let's assume it goes this high. <laughs> All this scientific stuff. All right, now I'm just gonna set this back to one and one, and I'm gonna key it. So right there, we've got ourselves a an up and down loop. So let's uh, let's just take a look at it if I play it. Now, obviously, we've got a whole bunch of things that really stink about this. First of all, the ball is moving up and down at a constant rate, which we don't want. Remember, we need our slow in and our slow out of our apex position, and we need to be going very fast when we hit the floor and moving up very quickly when we come off the floor. Uh, we're also squashing our ball too early. Now, obviously, we don't want to have our ball squash uh, as if it hit the floor on its way down. All right, so let's do a couple of things here. Let's... Uh, Let's stop this for now, and let's add, so this is our way up, all right? We're moving upwards here. So what I think I'm gonna do is I think I'm going to immediately add in our, I'm gonna put this to uh, 1.2, that's gonna be my maximum squash, my maximum stretch, excuse me, and put this at 0.8. So now I've got my ball going in the opposite direction. I'm gonna key my scale, and I'm actually gonna translate it up a little bit, maybe this high, and I'm gonna hopefully assume that's gonna be the, we'll adjust that if we have to. Uh, that might be too high, maybe this high. That's probably good. Boom, and I'm gonna I'm gonna key that right there. So that now gives me a a my ball bounce. That's my ball bounce. All right. It might have been easier to do this as a. Anyway, whatever. <laughs> I was thinking maybe do this from the apex, but whatever. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side here. When we're coming in at 30, uh, this is when our ball is going to hit the ground and it's going to be elongated at its maximum position as well. So let's elongate this to one. 
0.2, and let's get this down to 0.8. Nothing scientific about this at all. Boom, and I'm going to key this like that. So it looks like the ball is about to hit the ground. I've got it at approximately the same point each time. Bam, and I'll key it. So now we've got now we've got something a little better here. Let's take a look. Now it's still moving really crappy. It's still moving at a constant rate. That ball hit is is rather cruddy. We might want to adjust that a little tiny bit. Uh, we'll adjust it a little bit in a second here. So for now, what I'd like to do is I'm going to adjust the translation in my graph editor. All right, this ball is going the fastest at this point and the slowest at this point. So basically what I want this to look like, I'm going to hit my, my Bezier curves. I like the slow in at the top. This is exactly what I want, and I want this to be leaving the ground very quickly. So it's traveling at a very, very fast rate. And I might slide this out a little bit. I just don't like this graph editor. All right, let's take a look at how that looks. All right, let's take a look at how that looks. Uh, if I hit play... So the bounce down is looking, the bounce back upwards is looking a little better. The bounce down is obviously not looking awesome at all. I don't like it at all. It is, uh, it's still in a regular linear uh, pattern. So let's go back here to our translate. Let's grab this key. And once again, we are going to give it a slow in and a slow out. Now this case here is the opposite. We want it to slow out of this position and we want it to we want it to uh, race into this one here all right so we're gonna grab this and we're gonna drag it down like this so this is gonna give us a huge bounce all right let's take a look at that I don't love the timing of it I think maybe there's too many frames in here let's let's reduce the frames let's uh, let's drag this down I was originally gonna make this 24 frames and I think we should so let's drag these there and drag these to there. All right, let's take a look at that. Yeah, I like that a lot better. All right, so there's our bounce. Now, wh what I don't like about this is we're getting a lot of wobble in the ball. And when you're talking about squash and stretch, it really becomes uh, it becomes it's, it's basically up to you to decide how much how much squash and stretch you really want. And I don't think I actually want any squash and stretch on the way down. Uh, I don't think I want any squash and stretch on the way down. So right now we've got our ball springing up. It stretches and then it moves into position like this, takes its shape again, and then it starts to move down. And you can see how I immediately start getting this squash and stretch as we, as we start to move down. I can choose a point where my squash and stretch actually starts taking place. Right now, my scale is back to zero here. If I wanted, I could, I could avoid any squash and stretch uh, at all occurring on the way down until we're somewhere closer to the ground. Let's see if this gives it more impact. What if I change this value instead to be 1 and 1? One. 1, sorry. So I'm maintaining my ball shape for a lot longer. I'm not actually getting any kind of squash in the ball until I get closer to the ground. Let's see if that, if that exaggerates the impact of the ball. I think it does. I think I like that a lot better. All right, guys, you can see how quickly we were able to make that squash and stretch in the ball, how quickly we were able to make that ball loop with only a couple of frames of animation. All right, if you're doing this by hand, obviously you have to go through. If you're doing it on twos, you have a minimum of 12 drawings you have to do. But in the case of a package like this, we can do the entire thing in only a couple of drawings or a couple of frames, excuse me. All right, guys, I think we're going to call that an episode. Uh, the next half of this where we actually do the ball uh, translating along is going to take a little bit of time and a little bit of extra setup. So I think I'm going to save that for the next episode. Anyway guys, this was a good introduction to squash and stretch. We've got ourselves another good cycle here. So go on right now, give it a practice, try this exercise on your own, and I look forward to seeing what you're doing. Alright guys, thumbs up, thumbs down, comments down below, and if you haven't done so, please take a few seconds to subscribe. Have yourselves a wonderful day, everyone.